one day this old man complained of a severe chest pain so he was immediately taken to the hospital the doctors kept him under observation for one day and they decided to give him shocks on the chest so why did they give him shocks on the chest we'll see that very soon we know that we take in air that is rich in oxygen this oxygenated air reaches the lungs now the oxygen diffuses out of the alveoli into the blood vessels now these blood vessels then take this oxygenated blood to the heart heart is the pump of the body so the heart pumps this oxygenated blood to the various body parts now cellular respiration takes place in the body cells and during this cellular respiration carbon dioxide is generated so this carbon dioxide rich blood is then taken from the body cells via blood vessels to the heart and heart again pumps this deoxygenated or carbon dioxide rich blood to the lungs and the lung eliminates the carbon dioxide from the body so there are two circulations that are going on one that involves the heart and the lungs and the other one that involves the heart and the body since there are two different circulations we call this double circulation now arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood so this vessel that carries oxygenated blood from the heart is known as the arteries so this is an artery now the carbon dioxide rich blood from the body cells is again transported via vessels to the heart and since veins carry deoxygenated blood this vessel is a vein now it is very interesting to know that this vessel that is stemming out from the heart is an artery but it is the only artery in the body that carries deoxygenated blood this artery is known as the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs in the lungs this deoxygenated blood changes to oxygenated blood and this oxygenated blood from the lungs is carried back by vessels to the heart so this vessel that carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart is also a vein it is known as the pulmonary vein so the pulmonary vein is the only vein in the body that carries oxygenated blood it carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart so this circulation that comprises of the heart and the lungs is known as pulmonary circulation because it involves pulmonary vessels and this circulation that consists of the heart and the body is known as 
systemic circulation systemic means the all the systems of the body so this is pulmonary circulation and this is systemic circulation i am using c for circulation pulmonary means the lung and systemic means the systems of the body this is how a human heart looks like so the oxygenated blood that is present in the heart is pumped by the heart via blood vessels to the different parts of the body this oxygenated blood is pumped through this broad vessel which is known as the aorta this aorta divides into smaller arteries like these and these arteries then transport this oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body now cellular respiration takes place in the body cells where carbon dioxide is generated this carbon dioxide rich blood is then carried from the body cells via veins and all these veins they drain into these large pipes which are known as the vena cava now see there are many veins present in our body so the veins that are present in the upper half of the body drains in this pipe this pipe is known as the superior vena cava superior means upper so this is the superior vena cava and all the veins that are present in the lower half of the body drains into this pipe which is known as the inferior vena cava so just like other parts of the body requires blood for energy the heart muscles do as well for the continuous contraction and relaxation so for that there is a vessel which is known as the coronary artery this red vessel that you can see this is the coronary artery and this coronary artery supplies oxygenated blood to the heart walls now the heart walls produce deoxygenated blood so this deoxygenated blood is carried by this vessel which is known as the coronary sinus the coronary sinus brings back deoxygenated blood from the heart walls to the right atrium so the heart the human heart consists of four chambers the upper two chambers are known as the atria so this and this chamber is known as the atria and the lower two chambers of the human heart 
is known as the ventricles. Now, if you look at this picture, this might seem to be the right half of the heart and this might seem to be the left side of the heart. But if you see it from your perspective, your heart is situated at, over this portion of the body. So, according to your perspective, this becomes the right side and this becomes the left side. So, this is the right part of the heart and this is the left half of the heart. So accordingly, all the chambers of the heart are named. This is the left atrium. This is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. And this is the left ventricle. Now, the upper two chambers of the heart, which are known as the atria are functionally similar. They are the chambers that collect the blood. So these are the two atria and their function is to collect the blood. And the lower two chambers or the ventricles are also functionally similar. They are the chambers that exert the blood. So ventricles exert blood. Now, for blood to get transported from the atria to the ventricles or from the ventricles to the blood vessels, the heart muscles need to contract followed by relaxation. So contraction of the heart muscles is known as systole. And relaxation of the heart muscles is known as diastole. Due to this repeated contraction and relaxation of the muscles of every chamber of the heart, blood moves from the heart to the lungs and also from the heart to the body tissues. Deoxygenated blood comes from the body into the right atrium and from there moves into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, this deoxygenated blood moves to the lungs. In the lungs, this deoxygenated blood gets oxygenated. From the lungs, the oxygenated blood comes back to the left atrium and then moves to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, the oxygenated blood is pumped into the body again. This flow of blood caused by atrial contraction followed by relaxation and ventricular contraction followed by relaxation repeats cyclically in the heart or cardium. Thus, this cycle is known as the cardiac cycle. The time taken for one cardiac cycle is 0 0.8 second. Hence, blood gets pumped out from the heart after every 0 0.8 second and one heartbeat is completed. So, what is the pulse rate that the doctor measures? Well, it is the number of heartbeats in a minute. Now, in a minute, there are 60 seconds and one cardiac cycle takes 0 0.8 seconds to finish. So, the number of heartbeats in 0 0.8 second is 1. So, now by unitary method, number of heartbeats in 1 second is 1 by 0 0.8 and number of heartbeats 
in 60 seconds is 1 by 0 0.8 into 60 which gives 75. So there are 75 heartbeats in one minute that is the normal pulse rate. So for each chamber to go into systole and diastole the time taken is about 0 0.8 seconds. So there are four chambers in the heart. So the entire time taken for the systole and diastole of all the four chambers of the heart should have been 0 0.8 into 4 which is 3.2 seconds. So does it take 3.2 seconds for one heartbeat? Let us see. At a given time, all the four chambers of the heart is filled with blood. A chamber is either receiving blood or it is pumping blood. During systole of a chamber, the heart muscles contract and the blood is pumped into the next chamber. Like during atrial systole, when the atria contracts, it pumps the blood into the ventricles. And similarly, when the ventricle contracts, it pumps the blood from the ventricles to the blood vessels so that it can be carried either to the lungs or to the body vessels. Now see, when the atria is relaxing, the ventricle is contracting. See, the ventricle is contracting and the vice versa takes place. One heartbeat consists of atrial systole, ventricular diastole and the joint diastole. Now, look at this. You've often seen electrical data like this in the hospitals. So what do these electrical data indicate? Well, this elderly man suffered a massive heart attack. His heart wasn't pumping enough blood. See, the heart is not pumping efficiently because the heart muscles are not contracting. And this causes insufficient amount of oxygen in the body causing a lot of weakness. Now these electrodes that were placed on the man's chest measured the heartbeat. See? The heart was beating very slowly. That is the heart muscles weren't working efficiently. And this is proven by the electrical data. See, the spikes of the electrical data are very small, indicating that the heart muscles are not contracting efficiently. So the doctors decided to give him shocks to revive his heart. And indeed, the heart revived. See, the heart started pumping vigorously once again. That is, the heart muscles are contracting efficiently and this can be seen by these increase in the amplitudes of the spike which indicates that the heart muscles are contracting properly. That is, the, there is enough amount of blood pumped in the body. Therefore, there is sufficient oxygen present in his body. That is why he revived from a heart attack.